yeah! We finally got the full Ryzen 7000 series lineup here in the studio. I'm talking about the Ryzen 9! 7950X, the Ryzen 9 7900X, and the Ryzen 7 7700X, as well as the Ryzen 5 7600X that we recently reviewed. Eh, the balik. Never mind, can drop because don't have pins, cannot bend. I know we are a little late. Give face lah. Anyways, today I'm gonna answer a few main questions that you guys have been asking us on our social media about the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, which is number one, should you upgrade if you are a gamer? Number two, should you upgrade if you're a content creator? Number three, should you upgrade your CPU cooler, aka do they get hot? And finally, what speed of DDR5 memory should you get? Anyways, let's get processing. So many CPU, see you already also pushing on my head. Hey, you're still here. Go la, move on. You know what's good for every PC gamer out there? A little competition between brands. Two years ago, AMD took the gaming crown from Intel with their Ryzen 5000 series just to relinquish it when Intel 12th Gen came out. Now AMD is back with Ryzen 7000 and Dr. Lisa Su is promising a huge leap in performance over last gen, not only for gamers but also content creators like Limpet. In fact, she said that even AMD's weakest Ryzen 5 7600X is actually 11% faster than 12th Gen i9 which got a lot of us curious. What about Intel 13th Gen? Um, we just only got our 13th Gen CPUs and are not done with the benchmarks yet. So maybe you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to not miss out on more content like this. Anyways, let's take a look at the lineup. We have the Ryzen 5 7600X, Ryzen 7 7700X, Ryzen 9 7900X, and Ryzen 9 7950X. But what's new? Firstly, the Ryzen 7000 series processors are the first AMD CPUs to feature a brand spanking new cutting edge, a TSMC 5 nanometer FinFET process. Number two, these CPUs use a new LGA or Land Grid Array socket, AM5, which means that no more fear of bent pins on your expensive CPU if you happen to drop them, speaking from experience. But if you're clumsy, you might still ban a few pins on your now expensive motherboards lah. Thirdly, every CPU in the lineup got an almost 1 GHz bump in clock speeds which we all know plays a huge part in gaming performance. Look, the Ryzen 9 7950X even hit a jaw-dropping 5.7 GHz. Next, we get double the L2 cache which has been proven to also, you guessed it, impact performance in gaming. On top of that, all these CPUs now come with integrated graphics so if GPU prices are still a little out of reach for you and you're waiting for more affordable options from both the the green and red team and also blue team, you can rough it up for a little bit. But jokes aside, like a sneakers bar in your bag, it's pretty convenient to have in a pinch. I wanted to use a different product but I think it would be too adult for our PG-13 rating. Now I've recently reviewed the Ryzen 5 7600X which I said was a very competitive product for gamers and content creators alike. But it seems like the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs can be split into two major groups. On the left with a 105 watt TDP, we have the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. On the right with a 170 watt TDP, we have both the Ryzen 9s. Since power and thermals seem to be one of the hottest topic pun intended, surrounding these CPUs, I'm curious to see how they reflect on actual performance. Before we look at the benchmarks, these are the specs to our new AM5 test bench. For the motherboard, we have the ROG Strix X670e Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard with 32GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 rated at 6000MHz, which is supposed to be the sweet spot for Ryzen 7000. For the cooler, we are using a 360mm Corsair 150i Elite LCD AL cooler and a brand new 1000W Corsair RM E-Series 80 Plus Gold fully modular power supply. I'm gonna leave the specs right here so you can have a read and if you're interested in any of these items, feel free to check out the links in the description. The results from all our tests will hopefully help us answer these four questions that we started the video with. We're gonna kick things off with gaming benchmarks and starting with 3D Mark tests, we're seeing some interesting results. The 7950X performed 18% worse than the i9-12900K in 1080p times by, but 21% better in 4K times by extreme. A similar pattern can be observed in Firestrike and Firestrike Extreme, but to a much lesser degree. 
So with these new CPUs, especially uh, newer titles with DX12, it seems like going with a higher resolution than 1080p seems to be the way to go. Shadow of the Tomb Raider saw the 7950X neck in neck with the i9 as the fastest CPUs uh, we've tested for this game. Even the 7600X was no slouch, trailing behind by just a few percent. Death Stranding is where the 7950X beat the i9 by a whopping 22%, which is mirrored by a newer title. Dying Light 2. Though I must point out that the Ryzen 5 fared much better in Dying Light 2. Horizon Zero Dawn saw the 7950X beating the i9 by just 10%, while Cyberpunk 2077 saw the i9 take the lead by 14%. For esports players looking at Valorant, the Ryzen 7000 series is doing much better. But hey, we're in the range of way overkill and monitors can't even keep up with these FPS, uh, so it really doesn't matter. Overall, the Ryzen 7000 series performed up to 30% faster than last gen like AMD stated, especially with newer titles. The Ryzen 9 7950X was also 10-26% to faster than the i9 12900K in all titles except for Cyberpunk. However, However, I must say that the older 5800X 3D held up pretty well as well, except for Valorant that is. Moving on to productivity benchmarks, and this is where AMD tends to do better. Sure enough, we saw the 7950X beating the i9 by a massive 34% and the older 5950X by 20% in Premiere Pro. The same cannot be said about After Effects and Photoshop as the 7950X took a tiny lead of just 1-3%. to However, the faster clock speed did improve performance significantly over last gen 5950X. In DaVinci Resolve, the 7950X again took the lead over the i9 by 12% in standard, but the performance uplift was not reflected in extended. Though again, it's going to make a massive difference if you're coming from the older 5950X. Overall, I would say that content creators can consider going even as low as the Ryzen 5 7600X for every software other than After Effects, with minimal performance impact outside of render times with heavier projects. Moving on to 3D tests. In Cinebench, the 7950X decimated the i9 and its predecessor by a whopping 40% in multi-threaded. In single thread, it's still 21% faster than last gen, but only about 5% faster than the i9. The same performance leap was observed in both Blender as well as V-Ray. Safe to say that if 3D work is all you do, Ryzen 7000 series is the way to go. I would pretty much choose between the two Ryzen 9 CPUs. Now we did a few simple tests to see if DDR5 RAM speed would actually affect performance with the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. We pitched our 6000MHz rated kit with a slower 5200MHz Corsair Vengeance kit that we had lying around. Seems like when it comes to gaming, RAM speed does matter a little especially with higher-end Ryzen 7000 CPUs. We also tested Cinebench R23 and was surprised to see uh, not much of a difference in performance. If you guys are interested to see more benchmarks with the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs uh, paired with different DDR5 RAM speeds, uh, please leave a comment down below. As for the iGPU, please manage your expectations. It's going to be fine for some casual CSGO and maybe Dota, but don't expect to ditch the GPU altogether. Finally, let's take a look at temps and power consumption. Now, for those of you who are a little shaken by the 90 plus degrees Celsius from these new CPUs, yes, it's pretty much true when you're running super heavy multi-threaded loads as seen with our ADA64 stress test. It dips down to about 70 to 80 degrees while gaming, uh, which is where you should expect the temperatures to rest uh, on a day-to-day -day use with these processors. As you can see from the power consumption numbers, if the thermal headroom is there, these new Ryzen 7000 CPUs are going to try to use that to improve performance. Of course, if you're concerned with the temps, you can always make some adjustments to your settings to amend that while sacrificing a few percent in performance. So brother, what's the verdict? Please bear in mind that my thoughts are based on the fact that we'll have to pay quite a bit more for a platform change to AM5 and expensive DDR5 memory since DDR4 is not supported with AM5. But some of you could argue that it's a good investment given AMD's track record with AM4. So there's that. Regardless, here are my final thoughts. 
Firstly, should you upgrade if you are a gamer? If Ryzen 7 5800X 3D didn't exist, I would definitely say 100% yes, but alas, it does. And given the fact that you can build an AM4 PC for quite a bit less, if you are a pure gamer, I would say 50-50 on whether or not uh, you value the other tech improvements that come with this new platform. And number two, should you upgrade if you're a content creator? Heck yeah! Especially with the Ryzen 9s, these new CPUs are going to serve you well for both 3D work or heavier uh, 4K video editing. Number three, should you upgrade your CPU cooler aka do they get hot? Also a small heck yeah? These new CPUs TDP are quite a bit higher than last gen, while AMD recommends at least a 240mm AIO cooler for the Ryzen 9s and a tower air cooler for the Ryzen 5 and 7, I would go even bigger, at least a 260 60mm uh, AIO cooler for the Ryzen 9s and a 240mm AIO cooler for the Ryzen 5 and 7. Unless you want to run your fans at 100% all the time like a leaf blower. Number 4. What speed of DDR5 should you get? The sweet spot, like AMD suggested, seemed to be 6000MHz. But if you could get a 5600MHz kit for a little cheaper and it's compatible with you know, Ryzen 7000, uh, they should still serve fine too. I wouldn't use anything slower than that though. And that is everything I have to say about these new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like and share. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to see more content like this. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding these new CPUs or any questions for me. And I'll try to reply to you one by one because I'm very nice like that. See my face? Nice there. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew. Again, my name is Shane, the Bangsawan in Malaysia. And I will see you in the next one.